yeah are we live i think we are live yes we are live in in restream so let me we are just doing some bit of trial run with the uh video and and the screen share so let me just shop my shares to let me see if this is working out in in the platform also one second guys yes we are live yes awesome perfect great so we are live there are people who have tuned in uh, okay. all right wonderful so welcome to the experimental agritech sambad event uh, this is happening in agri bizbit agri business matters and i'm extremely happy to have anurag uh, in this program we've been we've been talking for almost now for a few months we've had long uh, breakfast conversations and chutneys and we've had uh, long evening conversations in various offices uh and i i really enjoy uh you know both anurag and and of course vivek who's who's probably tuning into this and who introduced me to anurag uh so you know before we really start uh, to this whole proceedings uh, we are going to so the way we are going to do this is we're going to have a initial introduction conversation and then we'll get on to the whiteboard where we will play around and and really get to the thick of understanding how a designer sees the uh fnv supply chain which is the fruits and vegetable supply chain uh here so before we get, really get started uh, anurag what is a ux designer doing in agritech world first of all thank you for having me uh, <laughs> uh so basically i think uh, see when i first started looking into this industry right i mean mm -hmm. i didn't directly start looking at it you could say a huge chunk of uh, how the media has shaped us into thinking about it with the farm distress farmer distress and all of that that we've seen mm. the reality we've learned over the last 3 uh, years as to what the actual ground truth is but that was one of the key influences as to why i even started noticing the space mm. right so my primary experience has been in building products for silicon valley companies uh, in the design world i really understood how uh, design can be a key lever in actually making the company successful uh, and you know there is classics uh, classic examples of how uh, design focused companies have outperformed uh, most of the other companies in the sm sm snp 500 by about 228% that's the, that's what the research shows so you take an ike you take an apple you take whatever else uh, that's focused on design they've tend to outperform every other company that has not focused on design traditional and non traditional right uh, and uh, so then i then that created that made me understand what value exists around design because it's ultimately about focusing on your customer needs which aligns with investor needs eventually because you are actually making it better for everybody to use um, and uh, when i started noticing the ground reality in india uh i mean we used to go get produce every day uh my mom was never happy with what is available right she was like okay i'm ready to pay whatever but i'm not happy uh, with what i see right you look at the news you see every day that the producers themselves are not happy right so there is definitely a disconnect right there is definitely a disconnect as to why uh both sides of the uh consumer i mean of the producer and the consumer are, are at the extreme ends and both of them are unhappy something clearly is wrong mm. right it's very easy to say middleman is the problem but there is more truth to it than just mm. that right uh mm. and that's where i started uh, dwelling in i started spending time i started uh you know talking to people whenever we went to our village whenever we went uh, outside we started uh, just talking to people understanding never commercials just understanding the full truth of what actually was happening in the country uh, today so did you have a i mean sort of where your family is all was all into farming or, or was there any farming background or uh, or uh, was it how was it like so directly uh, two generations up uh, not not much but generations before that yes uh, uh, we don't really i mean when we were kids we had Uh, uh mango farms and all of that but we didn't really understand what it meant back then right uh, uh but uh, today uh, we no longer have them because it was too much of a hassle to maintain when you're actually running a business on the side 
so but back then we didn't really understand much we were kids today when i look at all of this I, it's kind of starts to make sense as to mm. why things are the way the way they are and what can actually change to fundamentally shift the existing mm. distress that exists in the in the in the country right, right. so uh, you know it's it's interesting when when out you you talk about design and how design companies have have succeeded because fundamentally we've almost seen that the, the the structural issues right which are in the space go beyond the design in a in a certain sense they go beyond the design of uh, not just fancy good applications applications with us user interface we are going we are talking about design from the lens of how the entire ecosystem has been designed and what kind of problems that have that have been in this in the space and and how uh people are various people you know I, in my news that i've been tracking various people who are attempting to solve this problem and 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 you're also attempting to bring this solve this problem so to to really set the context i want to uh you know i i have this uh, lovely book uh, that i got from mehir which is the a uh, good book about the uh, fnv uh, supply chain uh, that recently came out and i would recommend that book there's a very interesting quote in that which is uh, posted by uh, indra gandhi you know india's ex prime minister indira gandhi in the 80s when she uh, meets uh, vagis kurian vagis kurian recently you know we celebrated the 100th anniversary of vagis kurian and and there was this quote where he uh, you know it, the the story goes like that uh, indira gandhi meets vagis kurian and she says that you know i'll just quote that uh, in a minute one second yeah so she says that i have this is apparently what Indra Gandhi told to Dr. Vagis Kurian that I have a 10 acre plot where I grow vegetables, and I get only one rupee a kilo for the vegetables I grow. But when I buy the same vegetables in the market, I have to pay six rupees a kilo. So, Dr. Kurian, who takes those five rupees and why? So, this is the fundamental question. Almost anyone uh, in the space comes in, right? Today, people uh, also, you know, this is not just from the from the perspective of of customers, right? Uh, it's also from the perspective of entrepreneurs who say who think that the, who see the farm mar- margins at one end in terms of what farmers are paying and then who look at the final consumer margins make a calculation saying he'd see the difference and say get excited about the space and say okay let me come in so and and this has been you know and and many of them have learned have burnt burnt money burnt investor money burnt their own money and 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 figured out the the you know the problems and various things have happened right so let's really break down and understand why this is exactly a problem so i think i'm going to now turn on the uh the my whiteboard here so that yeah. we can get on to the kind of conversations here so uh but before for people who are tuning in just an update that we are only going to do this in live in linkedin uh, so an apologies if some of you are trying to access this via youtube uh there are some issues in in the in in doing this with the visualization and uh, you know with the video so we are not able to do this in in both the channels set apologies i will so please if you are if you are trying to log on in youtube it may not work you have to come into the linkedin and and get on to this doing thank you so so now let's literally start from understanding this problem and and putting laying down a basic vocabulary here right so today uh before we actually get into this i actually wanted to kind of talk a little uh, mention a couple of points about how i am trying to break the barriers around design today in the uh, sure. yeah, especially in india see so why didn't you draw your how are you raising why didn't you draw it or and show you what what you are trying to uh, how are you breaking the design barriers here? sure see uh, for me at a fundamental level right if you think about design design is a natural form of life okay you talk about a bird building its nest you talk about a spider spinning its web you talk about a honey bee building its the honeycomb structure right design is everywhere right this so this is for alexander's influence <laughs> so no, no but at its at its very uh, at its at its very basic if you think about design it's not about mm. pixels right it's not about screens it's not about any of that at its very core if you think about it design oops one second yeah. so design is taking this complexity and ultimately giving it meaning right it's bridging this gap of complexity to meaning right it doesn't have to be in a certain medium 
it doesn't have to be digital it doesn't have to be uh, you know physical products right it's at its very core what it's solving is taking out the complex problems and giving it a meaning right one specific direction as to how you approach right so that at its core changes how you think mm. right so a lot of uh, titles you see today are around uh, are around technology right that's not necessarily true see uh, i always tell this right i always have this fight as to um, why technology becomes an afterthought in most places right we basically if, if somebody wants you know a brand new piece of technology right to have a uh, new tech design doesn't really matter mm. okay but when you want the common user right and gazillions of them to start using this mm. okay you want to make it mainstream design is very important okay so uh, fundamentally and this is the same principle with which i'm approaching i have touched right mm. so what is status quo today is not status quo in agile right is it, it, because nobody wakes up expecting that their experience is going should be shit right so at its very core it's a which is why i say it's a user experience problem right you have to put the user at the center think about where the where the business is headed right and you think about what tech can do right you are sitting here so that basically for me uh, and for a lot of people right and this is a lot this has become a lot more uh, common place in the valley today but india is still really at least 10 years behind of making this understanding at its center right about why design is not on the screen and has a lot more to do what happens outside the screen people relate to this easily because it's tangible you can see you can react right but there is a lot happens uh behind the screen that makes whatever you see on the screen so it's it's funny right when you look at a, a movie right you look at uh something mcu right you're looking at uh, guardians of the galaxy you're like oh my god this is so real mm-hmm. it feels so real right you immediately know there is a lot of effort put in graphics to make that specific frame when you look at design you mm. you're doing a checkout experience it feels so easy you're like yeah this is how it has to happen but we don't realize there is actually a lot of design effort that went behind making that check in checkout experience intuitive that it's the opposite of how you think about uh, 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 how you think about design in java right so no, but the, if i went to go sorry you go ahead finish it there yeah no the basic basic thing i was kind of trying to uh, tell is today's design has evolved 10 years ago ux as a discipline didn't exist right it has kind of become it has formed into this whole diverse breakdown of interaction design visual design user research and all of that uh when when you think about interaction design in general right think about how people first started interacting with machines mm. right it was on that and then uh, andro I'll, i'll i'll just pause you a bit here okay because sure. see i i just wanted to make sure that we are we are really grounded in a you know in terms of what is happening in an agriculture also right yes. so if you really think about it uh, if i were to wear a wear a devil's hat advocate mm-hmm. a hat it would be very you know if you if you see the way agricultural fme supply chain you know the this whole design that we we are talking about right which is uh, at at a field from from field here and then you uh, you know you talk about the next which is whatever is the uh, you know the middleman here let let me call it for simplicity sake let me just use the the description as a middleman yeah right and and from here 
and then we have a model which is overall you know and and here it reaches to the consumer yes now this model in terms of how this has uh, interacting over over the last 30 40 years if you if you really see you know, and i'm i'm saying 30 40 years in the sense that okay after green revolution happened in india in 60s and and then uh, there is over time you know mandis came in and and and, and have become like nerve gra- center gravity here in a certain sense center of gravity for for various activities that are happening and and so there is a certain complexity of that design that has evolved over 30 40 years yes now when you are saying design is natural right in terms of what is natural so the obvious question comes in is to in this part what you're talking about right which is which is where the the actual leap is happening right in terms of the from the complex to to the new there should be tensions in the current design and and that to to a large extent there some of the tensions may be obvious for 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 many of us but some of the but but you know if you were to really put an outsider's view then the question comes in that what is the tensions in in this whole you know in this three part type structure right i mean when i am saying three part type structure i am i'm talking with this at a slightly meta level here but where exactly is the tension that is coming at at one level the tension here is that that you know what was coming here from here to here is probably is not being valued in terms of you know in terms of whether the produce is is go through its full optimal potential and and then gets a value and and so so the, my my for my question here is what are the tensions in this whole design that you think necessitates for us to move from here to here see i think there is one level deeper that where it's not being applied so the infrastructure mm-hmm. that we've built the infrastructure that is being built today the approaches that are being taken today they leave out one of the or the core aspect of uh, the entire supply chain right which is the user himself or herself right so none of the systems built today are producer focused mm. okay the infrastructure is not producer focused okay mm. at the same time when you come to the consumption region they are not uh, consumer focused mm. right so mm. that's the biggest gap today right so when you talk about the producer think about it so maybe way. we have to uh, under just before we get into this maybe we have to draw a slide uh, a new note or you may want to write the whole uh, diagram and right. so that then we can get into you know people may not understand what we mean by consumption region this is production region. Sure. so so we'll just a primer we can just set up and then we can get have conversation somewhere yeah so i'll take over the entire board for this sure sure please uh, so this is basically the production region the way we like to call it whatever wherever your produce is coming from right uh, filling your tummy okay and this is the consumption region so uh, my uh, my friend vivek and i have gone through this countless times to understand why this region differentiation is important mm. uh, but why is this it, important see because people t- today right especially people today when you talk to a lot of the larger enterprises here they mm-hmm. tend to discount the value of what goes into getting produce from point a to point b uh by asking you to put that value into the produce itself right so if i'm getting tomatoes and delivering it in hyderabad and i say the cost of tomatoes is 25 rupees a kilo okay they're in uh, subconsciously thinking about the value of the produce and not the value of your service right so they're going to say i want landing price what is my landing price right and the assumption here is that that the whatever is the value of the produced yes. carries the value of the services that is offered which is not true right? exactly this is not true, right so and uh, most of the large companies today given there there are very uh, less number of players who dictate the market in mm-hmm. each of these individual regions mm-hmm. it's an unfortunate reality that that's what happens right people tend to push you for a landing price and inadvertently the burning of hands burning of investor money happens exactly there right 
right mm-hmm. so coming back right if you look at the production region right you the first person you have here right is a farmer i'm trying to get a little creative uh i actually sorry i'm using the wrong word this is again my uh fetish for gender equality i'm going to say producer <laughs> yeah uh yeah, it's a fair fair point i mean the maybe you know the yeah, like we we discussed this said the when calling it a farmer makes it obviously a uh, uh, carries also the whole generations of baggage that we've carried so long so exactly. so that is exactly. also there uh, just just before you write this let me also write down that key articulate that assumption that you write wrote down you mentioned earlier so i think which is very very critical sure. so, Should I continue drawing while you write that? Yeah, yeah, you just continue drawing. I'm just putting that just for us. Uh, I'm just putting this out as as a marker for us to to get into this conversation. Sure. so you are now drawing the entire uh, uh, vocabulary of how we are going to discuss the whole flow i'm i'm just ad- adding mentioning this to the audience here just so that they are coming up to speed here so we are trying to we first divided the whole uh, supply chain into two halves one is the production region and consumption region each each region has their own complexities uh, in terms of you know where it is near is situated near to the producer this is where it is situated near to the consumer so creating that distinction and then breaking down the entire supply chain so that we have a, a much more nuanced conversation so in, that's where we are right now at this point in this conversation there right? yeah but uh, and we'll continue once uh, anurag gets creative and and adds more things in the in the diagram this is your basically retail stores whatever else right mm-hmm. and in the end you have you and me sitting here trying to consume mm-hmm. Yeah, you you are going to draw also on the production region, a, a local mandi there, right? Yes. Nearby mandi. Yes. Yeah. This is today uh, multiple mediums. This could be your phone. Hmm. But they are all resellers. Typically, they are all the same. here you have between you have a mandi here right so between this layer you have aggregators so these are typically people who own a pickup hmm so Tata is, <laughs> yeah. Tata is uh, Ashok Lal and Bada Dost, right? So these are people who are acting as mediums between them. Not to say that this is the only way it happens, hmm. but uh, this is this is a common practice, right? Hmm. So of course these guys have connections here. Of course there is direct connections here, but you know when you, especially in vegetables, right? You have smallholder farms. They hmm. don't necessarily always get. enough output to directly take it to the uh, market and make it viable right which is where these uh, people from their own village uh, act as aggregators in multiple places they come they they go they sell it they take a cut and they uh, tend to come back right so uh, let's not ta- talk about people trying to scam people because that's always there no matter which industry you are in right uh, what we have to realize is okay so these people may directly buy from here there is a mandi here too right in the consumption region right both of these are your apmcs that exist right there is trade happening like this there is trade happening like this 
there is literally all forms of trade happening that you can think of all permutations combinations that you can think of today right so between both of them there are people like us who are uh, sitting here not let, not necessarily doing trade but adding value it could be uh, you know uh, a pack house right mm. back house as an operations right it could mm. be you know grading as a service right uh, it could be a gazillion different things that are more value added services that are needed before produce exchange can happen mm. okay so uh, this is basically lay of the land so to speak right uh, but uh, at its very core uh, what we have to realize right the 1 rupee to 5 rupee change uh, 1 rupee to 6 rupee change the 5 rupee difference is actually happening because people are trying to solve for lack of infrastructure in their own ways mm. Mm. okay uh, uh, lack of infrastructure so i mean uh, so, so i recently posted videos of our farm gate operations where the roads are so hard for us to get to the farm that is almost impossible uh, that you would expect a uh, actual uh, a large enterprise to go do that level of first mile logistics right so this is where your first mile logistics comes into picture hmm. this is the hard part hardest hardest part hmm. this is your last one this has so, been commoditized today if mm. you think about it mm. with the dunzo it is commoditized in terms of the we have optimized the cost of the last mile to the to the uh, nth penny are you saying that yeah you have a dunzo doing it for you do you have a shadow packs doing it for you mm. you have so many players today who have literally made uh, a last mile delivery easily accessible yes they have literally figured out the entire map they know what it takes to make it happen and it's mm. no different than uh, buying a commodity mm. right so which is why uh, you see this whole d2c push that is coming right mm. because the last mile parts has been kind of figured out uh, mm. in some sense right mm. how do you get it to the user how do you plan how do you get feedback how do you respond right all of that all of that you talk about that's kind of figured out this nobody is focusing on this as in you are talking about the first mile part i am not able to draw okay yeah this nobody is focusing on hmm. this side of production side of the region so but, see the way but, the way resellers work is they will de risk themselves get about 20 people serve them the same set of products hmm. right is going to say i am going to have i have a demand of 10 tons of tomato i'm going to have 10 suppliers each of them will supply 1 ton of tomato each i know my actual demand is actually 8 tons not 10 tons i know 2 tons will not come right mm. <laughs> so that's how they are operating mm. right? no so so they will basically they will hedge the uh, the uh, the variability of the demand by obviously by ordering more and uh making sure that the orders are fulfilled at the cost of uh in some sense inefficiency in some sense of the produce in right. some sense of and the entire logistical nightmare that exists in this whole thing that we are actually seeing right if you see at each point each point to point jump is uncertain mm. every single point to point jump is uncertain especially mm. in the first point uh, no but but i i'm i'm actually you know in some sense i'm stuck with one of your earlier point which is a very interesting point that i wanted to delve in which is uh, you were saying that you know this entire design is based on the a critical assumption that uh, that the infrastructure is not there yes correct which yes. means what we are saying is this entire design model is is in a way to hedge the the risk of of having a very poor uh, suboptimal infrastructure so out, yeah yeah sorry outdated in some sense 
outdated in some sense and and perhaps you know i mean it could be a word of argument for us is in terms of like you know whether uh, i mean so the, the reason why i bring that a critical assumption is you now that infrastructure design uh, you know today a lot of money is going into that also uh, but but you know whether that is that will change enough for us to to completely rethink it uh, or will this design because of the political nature of each of these design because there's also there's a political nature to this design yes. right in terms of who uh, who are the nerve centers at at each point right whether it is this point or or this point or here or here in each of these points there are nerve centers which which also make sure that the problem exists so that the solution exists yes Right. And some so, of the problems yeah. have been created, right? They don't necessarily need to exist, right? Okay. See, if you Can think you give about, an example? Yeah. See, if you think about uh, 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 this whole uh, Mondays, right? The first mm. and fundamental question I would ask is, why do they need to be visible? Mm. Right. See, and the questions like, why should price be dictated every day? Mm. Right. Mm. So. some of these are actually uh, created and don't necessarily need to be there uh, mm. uh, and uh, you know see the the focus is kind of missing we are not focusing enough on mm. making the producer produce better and we are mm-hmm. too focused on trying to teach the producer how and where to sell mm. Mm. right which is kind of completely defeats the purpose uh, right there are people uh, sitting here in the consumption region who've been there done that who do that on a daily basis as to how do you sell something to an end consumer right uh, yes but not at the expense of cheating someone but you understand the point right the core intent is to figure out how how can you help the producer grow better how do you give feedback right i'll give you a simple example that we come up with today right if i have to take tomatoes from a Uh, farm to a retail chain right it's not possible until unless you work with the producer because producers are tuned to harvesting tomatoes that are completely red mm. retail chains need tomatoes that are just starting to ripen because they need to sit uh, they need to sit on the shelf for seven days right there is no feedback loop sitting between what is needed for the end consumer and what is required for uh, at what stage should the producer do what right so i i one minute i mean we i i know we are we are uh, you know i'm i'm kind of holding you in a bit because i want to make sure that we delve deeper into the some of the insights that you're throwing in and yeah. then get to the specifics so before yeah. we come to the aspect of feedback loops i want to stop you at the the previous point in terms of when you mention that the price why should price be volatile i think it's an extremely important uh, questioning that you're making as a designer because today the fundamental which is taken for granted assumption is prices vary in the ecosystem because of supply and demand it's a very simpler answer that people say it means which is almost and 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 the, you know if you go one level deeper then the question people ask us prices now why do prices vary uh, it's because you know every product has its own lifestyle and you know it has its own ripening period every product has its own you know uh, to, uh, and tomato within a, let's say tomato or or on their own character they have their own characteristics so obviously prices should uh, should be volatile yes. so in terms of now when you are saying that when you are questioning that assumption uh, i'm i'm you know maybe it'll be it'll be worthwhile to delving deep into that assumption part in terms of in what ways can can we operate a design where prices need not be volatile and in what ways can we uh, design the whole ecosystem in a way where prices uh, are stable to a to a certain extent so so i think i think maybe you know delving that in and then we can maybe get into then the next part about the feedback loop uh so you know maybe we can use another board if you want i think i've messed up also with my blue that's fine text. uh <laughs> you can use another board and and add i'll i'll add and see why do you think the price is volatile right yeah. because i think i think that's a very very important assumption if we if we unpack it i think the, the, the we can go very deeper into this conversation 
so see if you think about it mm-hmm. uh there is at its very core there is cost of produce mm. this is a derived metric mm. derived from what right your inputs mm. labor mm. right and what else see this is a bhai i can make this a little bigger one second you can use the arrow to expand yeah okay so 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9th button if you can see in the below bottom that one helps you to take a drawer diagram and uh, you can do that oh i see okay okay got it the ninth one yeah okay cool so so meanwhile for the audience those who are tuning in uh, feel free to post your questions and comments as we discussing this uh i this is such a subject that we can't you know we can del talk about it uh, anurag and i can talk about it for a whole day so uh you know to to do justice to those of you who are tuning in and you're asking questions i see a lot of people are, are tuning into this please feel free to add your questions in the comments in the linkedin uh you know we will i will go back to the linkedin page and see if any questions uh people have raised which are chai finding interesting and we can discuss that and uh we can get into this Awesome. So, see, there is cost for you to acquire necessary seed, right? Mm. It could be from wherever, right? Sometimes you are making your own. Sometimes you are getting from somewhere. Uh, again, the feedback loop conversation comes in every single stage, mm. right? There are again specific inputs. It could be your fertilizer, it could be your pesticide, it could be whatever else right, that you need. It could be uh, you know other infra, right? I actually mm. missed it, right? Do you want for drip irrigation, for water, for electricity, right? Mm. Uh, other infra right that needs uh, uh infra at farm right so if you one, just one minute of... uh, one one minute anurag i think we are losing the the signal so one minute okay I'll just check i'll just check if it's if it's working out as we have planned one second just give me because i'm getting some coming complaints from people that they are losing out the video so oh, is just, it just uh, yeah i'm just checking that out one second just give me a moment Yeah, I think I think it's working well. Perfectly. Well. Go ahead, please. Okay. Excellent. Sorry. Right. So it's just about kind of all of this together will kind of give you your cost of produce, hmm. right? This is a specific uh, template with some level of room that you can leave to define hmm. what the produce cost will actually be. That is enough, hmm. right? That hmm. should be equal to making. the farming why hmm. forget profitable right this is the bare minimum that needs to be done hmm. to make it viable right hmm. so if you look at each of these right these are more or less pretty standard hmm. right here there are issues again with access and all of that again hmm. this is a whole topic in itself we can go hmm. and that will become a new samad by itself this you are the expert i don't really need to say much uh, uh see this again fixed right pretty fixed they they don't change right the mm. cost it takes for you to drip per acre is kind of already uh, measured here there are a lot of what is missing here is there are a lot of hidden costs today mm. electricity mm. is free mm. nobody is factoring in this cost mm. family is farming mm. while the men are happily chilling out the women are working at, at the farm this guys labor mm. their kids who are supposed to be going to school are actually working at the farm mm. right this is nobody is paying for this mm. right no pay this cost is not included mm. right so 
and then anyway if you have to employ more people and do all of that that is fine that you are anyway paying hmm. right there is instead of dollar value let's make it rupee value specific money you are putting in right hmm. all of these give you the cost right hmm. so we can come to a some sense of saying okay this is how much it's going to take for xyz to at least at the bare minimum not make that whole thing go hmm. waste hmm. are there seasonal factors that come and disrupt this whole thing yes right hmm. that's a bigger climate change conversation right but the point is uh, uh, yes those things happen tend to happen hmm. uh, quite a bit again we are innovating we are talking about controlled environments growth and all of that we are doing a lot of those but at its very essence if, if we take all of the other uh, things and talk about this cost can actually come to uh, some certain range with which you can work mm. okay and uh, add on top of that some return uh, to the to the farming family more than that right mm. so uh, instead of this what happens today right you see tomato going to 100 right uh, you see onions going to 150 right uh, and uh, all of this again because there is huge amount of uh, mismatch that is ha- happening purposefully mm. right to do that right you know you know that last traders government bodies most of them are in the business to store and sell at a time where the price is higher mm. right uh, and again some some of these concepts just don't make sense mm. right uh, and basically which is why i say right the cost mm. need not change mm. so now when you take this to the consumer this whole thing has a specific cost plus mm. add whatever right add mm. just Add service, hmm. any value-added services, right? Hmm. And you have the consumer sitting here, at the heart, hmm. right? Hmm. That's the price, hmm. right? So, so it doesn't make sense, right? So today we sit and. half the time is gone in price management They're like oh this market is giving me x rupees that market is giving me y rupees why are you giving me x it's it's just a nightmare mm. it's just a nightmare it's there, there is and unfortunately for even producers price is a matter of pride mm. i mm. sold it at the highest in my taluka mm. Mm. right <laughs> they don't even know so everybody you could be in the peak season of tomatoes everybody else could be selling at 2 you could mm. be selling at 5 and you could still be losing but you are happy because you you are somebody who sold it at 5 and not well, right it's, it's extent of it's extent of how much inefficiencies have crept in into the system for so long i think you're making an extremely important point because you're saying that today when prices are are the bar is so low that you are able to you are able to feel good that you've gotten a, a a price which is higher there without completely uh, being clueless about yeah. what is my cost my own cost there exactly. and and for all you know if i do my own balance pnl and balance sheet 95% it is going to be at least negative it will be negative because nobody is talking about all the cost the uh, the Uh, the government is bearing the farmers are getting subsidies for and all of that see we are not against any of those it's just that we don't factor them in into the cost that need to be factored into it's about really understanding what the actual cost is right mm. <clears throat> so yeah long story short so that's that's the biggest issue uh, from a from a day to day perspective every year it's a new commodity that comes up right until 3 mm. years ago uh, uh again see climate change has a huge role to play okay mm. uh, until 3 years ago pomegranate would never touched 60 today it's mm. not going below 100 mm. right yes there is definitely a shortage and all that but it is not that 
it doesn't make sense the price that goes up today just doesn't make sense hmm. Uh, no, but that's where uh, that's also now brings in another point, right? If the price yeah. doesn't make sense, it ties to the second point that we were just going to discuss earlier. Which is uh, why is the feedback loop not going back to the farmer or the producer? Correct me. I'm apologize for using that. Sure. Why is the uh, feedback loop not going in? So because see today, if I if I like to add add to the, the that whole thing. or let me let me use the same one itself so that it's, it's much more easier sure hmm. so here uh, if i hope people are able to see the screen here so now in at the producer now if the market is ideally should be designed in in a, in a certain way where whatever is is happening in from here you know it is going in here then the market feedback loops should come from here to here exactly exactly now what is stopping this feedback loop to go from here to here there are two parts to this right see when we uh, bucket this right so there are, at the mm. consumption level there is utility that has to be understood mm. so if i am consuming <clears throat> onions as a hotel or a restaurant mm. Right? Mm. i am consuming specific kind of onions for specific reasons Right. Mm. but if i am consuming onions at home i am consuming mm. that specific onion for a specific reason right in mm. your in when you're cooking at home you're focused on consuming the onion in such a way that if i cut it i don't have to store half of it in the refrigerator mm. okay if i am consuming it in a restaurant or a hotel i am consuming the larger ones because i need to make onion rings i cannot make onion rings with small ones right so mm. first and foremost what we need to understand is who are all the consumers that exist right and what is the utility for each of them mm. okay then it is about mapping the right produce to the right customer mm. okay then you build feedback loops it makes sense mm. right because at its very core is it meeting the utilities needs or not that's what has mm. to be answered through this mm. Right? and for this right digitization is paramount mm. right mm. and see and it doesn't necessarily to stop at the producer from the producer it has to actually push back and hold seed companies accountable right all of mm. the un- seed failed why mm. so, <laughs> no but but that's why now it's a multi dimensional system so now the the question comes in is that it's almost anyone can shrug off their responsibility and saying you know uh, this was an ad this was this was the climate was different or maybe you planted differently or you didn't follow the right agronomy practices and 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 so i mean so i'm i mean maybe let's 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 get into a, a, a more specifics about how you have designed this whole thing yeah. uh, you know we have talked about the uh, the 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 ideal system i mean the, the, we've talked about the current system and its problems so now sure. maybe uh in 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 your design as to how you have thought through this can you maybe show what was the uh you know what i'm interested to understand also is uh what are the changes you made in your designs like you know like what was like the first design and then you realize that this was not working then the second design then the third design is there some way can can you maybe show, show it some g- glimpses of how that evolution has happened and i think that will be more exciting to to understand in terms of you know what what were the changes that you brought in more than the i mean i the current design we can, will come to that but but i'm trying to understand the changes you made as you were assessing the system and, and brought the brought updates and update brought updates in the whole design sure see when we first started uh, how do i empty this do i just say same or how does ha huh, you just i just add put plus another and put another this screen i don't see that option i think maybe okay let now i, I can you can you see it now i okay. created a new board here sure so when we started first 2018 i think right uh, we were just focused on the horeca segment right mm. for us uh, we started as a demand aggregator right we wanted to uh, capture the demand on the consumption side Mm. right where you have uh, here you have horeca 
as one category right mm-hmm. just uh, one category that we wanted to focus on because this was sizable volume that gets consumed every day mm-hmm. right and we wanted to try it on a loop uh, for a continuous period of time right mm-hmm. so when we did this we grade was not a problem for us mm-hmm. right because here uh, the they were more focused on of course not that we are selling rotten stuff uh, but the point is we are uh, just making sure we are uh, meeting the utility of the end consumer how does the utility mapping happen somebody has to sit with the chef and talk not with the business owner right they have to go sit with the business owner this is where again design comes into picture right understanding your consumers right so when we started we started saying okay i will take from the local mandi i don't care even if i lose money hmm. i just want to establish this and i'll establish yeah. almost like a uh, based you know lower stage denominator produce which yes. can be used for everything yes exactly right so we basically started like that we said that is the easiest thing to do and we were we were happy right and what we did was <clears throat> we built our product right here you had farmrev.com right this was again bringing back the status quo conversation right what is status quo for you when you order something from a swiggy or a zomato today is not status quo for a business owner who's trying to run their own mm-hmm. restaurant get it off the ground right mm-hmm. they have to interact with 20 different uh, suppliers mm-hmm. one for each one for chicken one for mutton one for uh, vegetables one for fruits somebody for soft drinks mm-hmm. somebody for water <laughs> right mm. you have like so many different uh, whatsapp groups to manage <laughs> right mm. india kind of runs on whatsapp groups today right <laughs> so we basically said you know what let's at least give some uh, let's at least bring some sense into this let's make something mm. let's because this is what people have started demanding right people said uh, hey you have such a delightful experience when you order something from us mm. but when i am trying to do it it is a nightmare mm. right what status quo for us is actually not status quo for the industry right which is mm. which was the first big upgrade they are like oh my god i can just sit order everything comes mm. right they are like if it's not available also buy it and give it to me charge it extra i just don't want to go through the hassle of going and getting it again mm. right this is the counter to the argument of why should a producer learn to sell this is like should i run my business or should i uh, uh, run searching for inputs hmm. no but that's that's again another aspect right today uh, there is a whole lot of talk around people farmers wanting to become entrepreneurs yes i mean not producers Produ- wanting to become entrepreneurs yeah. so uh, then the question comes in if producers have to be entrepreneurs and and if that's the larger narrative it would mean that they uh do producing production which is like whatever with all their complexities and then they find all set of buyers navigate through a whole variety of options which is mm-hmm. i mean and sometimes they may not have options also in terms of depending on where you are placed and and then do that so in 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 the ideal design that you are planning in uh are you saying that production uh producers only stick to production uh and while the rest of the people do that or what are you saying so i'm saying there is more value to be made if there is a larger collaboration between people giving the actual seed and the product okay uh, selling as far as it gets standardized it's easy it's straight forward right mm. if you are able to standardize it uh, there is no cheating there is nothing it can be made a uh, transparent practice mm. right if you are able to classify and uh, segregate accordingly mm. i'll give you this example right today we uh, we go uh, work at the farm gate lab right mm. i hope everybody understand understands farm gate where we don't let the producer come to a collection center mm. right we rather go to the producer's mm. actual farm itself right mm. a lot of our operations run there on the farm at the spot for multiple reasons one is to reduce handling reduce damage uh to make sure that the producer doesn't really have to think about all the variables around how do i get my produce from point a to point b mm. and try to add those costs which may not be the most efficient way of making that transaction right uh and all of that and then 
we finish that transaction by 11 am in the morning mm-hmm. right so uh, this is time saved for the producer who can actually spend the rest of the day post lunch mm-hmm. with uh, checking the farm making sure there is no disease they making sure there is no attack figure out if they can take advice from anyone and all of that if they did not have this they would actually be spending time taking this produce hiring a pickup going to a mandi waiting there for the whole day trying to sell it there and spend countless hours not really worrying about the production but actually be worrying about the sale right so basically you are you are also defining the scope of his operations Okay. Right. in terms of and the where he is operations should, should scope to limited where it should be limited the the entire country would benefit from just people trying to make that production process better right mm. and people trying to solve the inputs people trying to solve the advisory uh, uh, this thing could right go for it do more of that I, we'll bloody open up every goddamn farmer that we are working with right please help improve production right so the point is how can we make sure that the producer can spend time doing things that can add value to the larger group than actually focusing on doing this grunt work to uh, do the sale right of course this will only happen if that transparent models exist where they are able to clarify the classification clarify the price give the uh, necessary uh, supporting logic for why that is what it is right mm. and give all of that then they can actually relax and do all of the other things that we just spoke about right mm. so <clears throat> so this is what this is how we started again coming back uh, unless there are questions coming back to this, this is how we started right mm. so today we are sitting here directly in front of the farmer right uh mm. sorry producer uh, at the farm i mean right mm. they have their farm they have the crops right mm. <clears throat> so we have our uh, pickup station here uh we have people deployed we are doing the harvest and post post harvest processing right at the farm mm. right uh and this directly goes yeah. so if if let's say we are doing a multi commodity the same thing repeats right we have more and more uh, people here you would have a basic very basic aggregation station so to speak i don't like the term collection center it kind of defeats the purpose it works for milk it doesn't work for produce uh, uh basically you have which is which a very interesting important point that you just casually mentioned in advent <laughs> sure uh basically this is what happens and no produce will stay here for more than i don't know for us so it's stationed here uh, that evening the facility leaves to whichever location it is so yeah. so just just to make sure that i i get the whole thing correct uh, so from here whatever the production there the, the from from the aggregation center the, the your truck goes in and picks up from all the farmers in that nearby region and then comes and brings it back here and, not just that and, we have people deployed at the farm who are doing operations at the farm the grading the necessary uh, you know packaging that needs to happen to make mm. sure there is no damage in transit happens on the farm gate uh, and then and only then it moves out See, the biggest issue, the whole uh, collection center uh, comment that i made right is see when you're talking multi commodity we have about more than 100 right that's roughly about 120 to 150 somewhere in that range uh, number right of commodities right with 100 plus 100 commodities what's the number how many commodities are there yeah 100 plus commodities right and each of them have their own nuances that need to be talked hmm. right how i am uh, uh, dealing with uh, let's say onion is very different than how i am dealing with a brinjal to a tomato right hmm. 
So, so the, I'll, I'll just ask you with this one fundamental question. So, what you are saying is with with these years of operations, with one truck that is going in from your aggregation to or the people who are operating in there, he is he is he is automatically at, for each transaction on each drive that is going in. I mean, like from this vehicle that is going in and picking up from from the operations there, he is doing it for all the commodities simultaneously. Yes. Yes. So, so imagine if I'm your, I'm working under for for you, and I am the one who's at the farm gate. So mm-hmm. I will go to. Can you give me a sense of the day's operations? Like you will go at eight yeah. o'clock. You'll go to farm A and so, and procure say brinjal and go to farm B procure say cauliflower. Like is that how it is? So today I'll give you today's example happening right now. Already maybe already happened. So today I have people deployed in Mulugu, which is north of Hyderabad, which is actually a growing belt for all the guards. Rich God, Bottle God, whatever you name it. Uh, we are probably procuring about a uh, thousand kilos of Rich God every day. Uh, I have uh, the farmers are notified a day prior saying there is X demand. Please harvest. Right? They start harvesting. Uh, it is uh, put. I wish I could show show videos. Uh, maybe I'll share it later. We can put it somewhere. Uh, but uh, we actually go uh, to the farm. Uh, there are people who are. Uh, grading it at the farm there are people who are segregating it loading it into the vehicle and coming back right and from uh, if you order today uh, if if you order today from uh, swiggy and somebody you're probably getting our produce which is the freshest possible produce right because from farm gate to their uh, warehouse it reaches within an hour of harvest right thereby making sure there is better keeping quality you are able to uh, leave it on the shelf for longer you are able to make sure that uh, no transit level losses are there or they are minimized significantly because you are actually doing everything there uh, in contrary to a collection center where because they do not understand these practices that need to be followed at the farm gate they tend to uh, optimize for loads right so here we are not optimizing for say okay i have to squeeze everything in a uh, in a 750 kg uh, capacity auto right so i'm focused on making sure that nothing happens to the produce right i get the right uh, vehicle in place right team in place they're making sure they're loading everything properly and it goes to the customer versus when you're looking at a collection center model they are probably getting a smaller hire because it's cheaper right and they tend to put everything in sacks right in gully bags they tr- tie all of that up they load w- one on top of the other when they're very delicate half the produce is already damaged by the time it reaches the collection center right the roads are not uh, optimal when you look at the farm level right uh, by the time they reach the highway it's <laughs> 25 30% of the damage is done <laughs> i can't hear you thank you sorry so in that sense the difference between your the mod your model and an agri and collection collection center model is comes from the uh, from the fact that you are if going to the farm gate and picking up yes with the way they coming in and and there and then doing but but they you know i mean but they still you know even in a collection center model some some uh, some tata is trucks could be going and picking it and putting it a collection center no? so what exactly is the difference that that is making your model slightly more uh, durable in terms of keeping the qualities and freshness there because i so, i saw even in your website you don't have the you you have like a day rate exchange policy or something like that right yeah yeah no uh, the so at the uh, today right so today none of the collection center operate the farm right they have locals employed who have a network of mm. producers right and uh, with that relation they make transactions and the produce actually comes to their collection center sitting in the, it's still geographic which is what vivek and i always keep pushing back about right why should it be dependent on location right why should it be limited to location right and a lot of my first mile logistics i'm blessed because vivek takes a lot of those headaches on on himself right uh, uh and you see because so the classic example of what happened right when you when you're focused on geography right you will end up opening thousands of collection centers and you're always limited to the radius of the 10 20 50 km radius mm. right produce by nature is not like that 
right a whole district right a whole district will have a complete production of that uh, produce mm. right so the success lies in being able to build a very uh, you know lightweight models right the moment you talk about infrastructure being built you're talking about heavy models they're not lightweight mm. at all right mm. and this notion that things have to come to you you are superior they are inferior that creeps in a lot today we see that a lot today with with every every place we are selling at every place we see sales happen be it the market itself be it the raithu bazar is a classic example right you have farmers standing outside the raithu bazars and middlemen actually selling inside the raithu bazars the irony right mm-hmm. so the whole notion with trying to make geography a this thing is ripe for everything not happening in favor of the producer which again brings back the question right should the producer produce or sell right so and these have kind of formed after you know visiting every possible touch point understanding every possible touch point why are they the way they are and i am pretty sure a lot of this is going to change right even our our hypotheses that we are going ahead with today right we are going ahead with the idea or the notion that we are going to validate invalidate whatever the hypothesis that we've set up mm. right we are not we are not going there to uh, say this is a yes or a no we just we are just as clueless right but we are not afraid to experiment and we are right. not afraid to experiment very very fast right mm. so okay in a nutshell that's that's basically where the operations uh, uh, run today and uh, i'm kind of thankful for everybody who's helping supporting uh, in all in all sense uh, but uh, yeah but, but this is hard work right the first mile logistics operations is incredibly hard i think and, that's that's where the that's where the you know the complexity under the bonnet is there in terms of how do you orchestrate the first mile logistics uh and and but but again i mean there's i i see i'm seeing a comments from people various kinds of comments in terms of data yeah. flows and there one of the comment is also is in terms of do you also do forecasting of price forecasting of vegetables i am assuming you don't but yeah we you don't add to it i which we, defeats the whole purpose of you know yeah, because for, interesting about. that whole forecasting as a model right people try to say okay there is data available online but data that data is wrong so you go look at the data that is being published today uh from the marketing department to what is actually the price at the market there's a difference mm. right there is no way for you to uh, use that data to come to a so uh, broad broadcast broadcast at price and transact the price at effect right they're not they're not say <laughs> yeah. transacted I, 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 price is very dependent on the relations you have with the exactly <laughs> exactly so i mean i think today uh, uh, you know i mean the problem comes in and most of us when we are trying to solve these problems also we we come uh, look at it from the sense of uh, you know what systems have a certain point of truth and and design the the whole thing from from that perspective in terms of you know like this is the system this is the point of truth that it has and and then from there we proceed and i, I think uh, under my, and i think this condition would have really uh, brought in the you know, i have hoping it would have made, made sure you question some of the fundamental assumptions here no because it helps to have uh, people you trust right so i have uh, my co-founder on the design from that era uh, aditi mm-hmm. so we always tend to question each other's hypotheses right we basically say hey uh, why is it that we are approaching uh, today the solution of trying to connect point a to point b or get produce from point a to point b the way mm-hmm. we are doing it today right mm. today we still have that assumption right maybe this is wrong mm. right but we like we'll find out right we'll mm. find out and we are the beauty is we are not complacent we are not married to any specific idea mm. right and, which is what how makes- you, so how do you see then the you know, hypothesis changing over time do you think uh, you know because now infrastructure is building up you know which is a key assumption we started off with yes. and in in that case then would you see this whole model changing in in few cause when the infrastructure has been sort it it does see because uh, see infrastructure see government is i'm sorry uh, okay maybe i should not use the word but there are certain institutions that are pretty bad at doing stuff okay mm. nothing's going to change okay mm. 
okay and uh, it is it it is left upon us see you you take about biggest disruptions that happen right? mm-hmm. disruptions happen not caring what's the existing system mm. right because mm. they they focus on what is the true need and how do i solve that true need i don't mm. care what what the last say i don't care what the uh, uh this thing say right? see we say okay there is no permission for Uh, people to directly buy from producers that has been happening for the last 20 years mm. in the fresh produce segment that's not at all true people directly buy institutions directly buy reliance has national procurement all across they buy directly right so nothing stopping them from buying and nobody is going to come and interfere because it's a very sensitive issue right you can't tell the farmer that you cannot sell there sorry producer you cannot sell there that it become it, see that's that's why i'm basically saying right there is intent there is true intent around trying to make something better and nothing can come in the way of that mm. right invariably system change right the whole uh, ride hailing that that shift that happened with uber in the us right uh, with the you know when you talk about that whole uh, medallion right that whole taxi system that existed to how the whole ride hailing has changed it mm. there were laws in place against it mm. but it still happened mm. right so most of the changes that actually happen happen with core problems starting to become of larger value right starting to become of larger importance right so mm. that's what we believe in that's what that's how things have eventually changed also right mm. uh, it's not a question of replacing see uh the radio did not replace newspapers mm. tv did not replace radios <laughs> right it's just that mediums and all of these of how you consume them have changed right mm. and they're all still relevant right so in some sense the, these will continue to remain parallel supply chains where uh, where there is going to be almost i mean it's almost like the pareto's principle of 80% is going to be still be by the traditional defunct one and and 20% uh, would be there so but but do you see overall from from where you started now how how your growth is going on and and how do you think this is really bringing a shifts attitudinal shifts at the farmers level there how are you doing seeing it is, it is i think uh, there is definitely resistance early on when we try to explain mm-hmm. the principle which see one of the things that we do very differently is we push the farmer to give everything grade wise okay there is a premium there is an economy there is a standard right there is uh, uh things that you can measure based on what's on the surface right mm. uh, there are a lot of conf- there are a lot of uh, parameters that you can take shape size mm. uh, ripening stages right uh, everything right everything that you can physically kind of think of you can we kind of make that we make a uh, probable grading system for mm. each produce that right? we explain what each of those are and we price each grade. so we are trying to incentivize the farmer to grow better the more premium there is the more money you make which is precise to the whole feedback loop that is that we are talked about in terms of see i mean see it, it, in in some sense the feedback loop has been broken because yes. the uh you know in in a certain sense the until until then what it is the incentive that he is getting into change the feedback was not evident at it all not there. it was not there at all everybody is like yeah market mein aisa hi milta hai you know so people are used to it so, so then for him also it's like you know to for mac you mehnat nahi ho raha it's like market is taking anything i give how does it matter market tells them ab jo kharab hai niche rakho jo acha hai upar rakho market tells them that. Right. <laughs> so Good. that's the that's the that's the true reality. But again, hey, having said that, there is there are people. Uh, one thing I appreciate is there are actually producers who are directly taking the sale. There are producers who are actually directly working with institutions. More power to them. They should do that. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's why that's why a lot of people are today are betting on also. I mean, where people think that you know. But again, uh, the the you know, how do you mention make sure that the ground uh, basic things are they are taken care of. that's where i think the challenge is in terms of like how do you make sure that he the right behavioral incentive is there for him to change and and then get the seeds and and again like you know seeds is again a very big aspect here right today uh, that 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 is again an, another 
you know universe that we can dive into sometime but but exactly. that is also you know in a, in a certain sense uh keeping the problem as it is yes exactly 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 it's not changing there is no uh, i mean people there is focus on you know disease protection all of those but there is no true feedback that is actually saying this variety is good for this utility mm-hmm. right that 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 is missing uh, quite a, quite a bit right great i th- i think i think we've covered a, a good good lot of depth here and i i would uh, you know uh and i think this is something that we can go on deeper there but but i'm i'm very what what is your future look like how do you see do you see this just scaling this or or do you see at some stage where you may have to bring in some radically new hypothesis that you'll have to trial this out how do you see yourself let's say 10 years from now i know it's a very trite question okay. but but i'm i'm trying to see from a designer's lens how you as there do you see a, a critical threshold in which some of your you know you you talked about your co-founder are always questioning the hypothesis yes. do you see at some point where your uh, fundamental hypothesis will will radically change is there a critical threshold or you see yeah so see one of the things that we know that has to happen is each of the touch points that we are seeing have to become digital okay instantly right not for the sake of becoming digital but for the sake of bringing in transparency into the system hmm. right today that is lacking right hmm. so today i i have switched off my phone for this event otherwise i would have gotten 20 phone calls trying to f- fight fires right mm-hmm. so the the point i'm trying to make is uh, even for larger enterprises today right so I, i let me just talk about pack house operations so i have an indent that gives me 1000 packs of onion i have to deliver it by 4 pm right and i would probably be getting multiple calls just to figure out where the produce is mm-hmm. right so visibility right now, is extremely we uh, people is an operations heavy right and and it will continue to be that and, uh, because the amount of technological shift that you have to bring in relies a lot on edge computing computer vision right uh, you talk about sensors iot devices uh, at the farm uh, digitizing your entire distribution system right uh, giving the producer access to uh, make decisions at the palm of their hand right and the beauty is all of this is not something you would be sitting and doing in front of your desk but you would be doing on the go on your phone mm-hmm. which again ties me back to the technology question right is technology first or is the problem first right the answer is neither is just about creating the right marriage right so it's about uh, because the way i think about solving this problem with available technology changes today with internet being omnipresent with uh, smartphones being uh, you know in every single person's hand the way i think about solving that problem will be different mm. right versus i did it 10 years ago which was which was collection center was the solution right mm. so basically uh, right so that that's what i basically always say why uh, the hat of technology is incredibly important for somebody to because you're always applying new age technologies to uh old world problems mm. does that make sense right yeah, so yeah, yeah. you are so that's where we are basically right so we are now focused on saying how can i first and foremost give entire visibility into uh distribution and all the value added services that we are providing be it pack house uh be it uh, last mile be it uh anything right be it uh, say okay what is from when has this been harvested how long did it take for it to reach your door uh who's the producer why is that important right uh, all of those right so you basically think about so eventually when you get into this world of uh, hey we should eat healthy we should grow organic and all that this becomes a lot more relevant mm. right uh because people are becoming a lot more conscious about what they eat people are becoming a lot more conscious about uh, what's going into their uh, what's on their plate right uh the uh, you already see movements of uh of people actually going to uh restaurants that are producer centric of local farming centric right uh so uh, stuff like this right but you always have to take their word for it we can actually give the real data that people can access and understand and know for sure that whatever is actually coming is the truth right? yeah. uh so if i'm getting onion from 
ఎలాసల్ గా ఉన్న ఫామ్ yes sure we'll show you the entire thing right uh, you're getting rich god that is harvested at 11 am today it is reaching your home at 4 4 pm you know it's actually come right uh, and we're we're even trying to figure out ways in which we can open all of this uh, give apis and give it off to the larger companies which who have done last mile better than us who are way miles ahead like a swiggy or a zomato or a grocer or whoever it may be and they can actually access that information right so we are building these technology layers right uh, while we are still figuring out farm gate operations for all the 100 plus commodities that we have right? we probably only figured it out for seven or eight but we have yeah. to figure out for the rest rest of the 100 plus commodities that exist uh, and that we have to build right and my friend the way he likes to uh, we would like to bring it up right it's a logistics problem right yeah. how will you move a 24 tons worth of grapes from nasik to hyderabad when there is no demand for 24 tons yeah. <laughs> so, so the, a lot of these questions are interlinked uh, uh, there is belief that uh, solving the produce problem is by solving logistics first mm. right mm. uh which is there's there's a lot of truth to it definitely a lot of truth to it a huge percentage of which uh, uh is completely you know i'm aligned mm. uh and there is a lot of things that need to be done on the consumer side with respect mm. to educating them with respect to making them used to new methods of uh, order mm. so today my orders are on an excel sheet mm. or in an email it's just horrible right so <laughs> your order is going as a ping to a restaurant they are happily seeing it on an interface uh, paidpooja.com and they are able to get everything right mm. so because which is because people have started questioning uh this one good thing that has happened over time as people have started questioning uh, uh why is my technology why is my experience crap no but but again which brings to the central question that i wanted to ask you see uh do you see a foresee a time when uh like for instance i'll take i talk about my own consumption right in my own family sure. i be, knowing for, going some for someone who is like in this in the ecosystem who understands this i obviously don't trust the uh, uh the traders in terms of whatever they promise they make or for whatever kind of produce they make right okay. so so for me the question comes as now i have made it produ- in my own for my own family's consumption i have made the solve the problem for my own family by talk melting relationship with directly with producers yes so i get rice from a particular producer i get my veggies from few other producers yes uh now but obviously this is not going to be this is this is i have the luxury of doing that and because of my relationships here and i still don't also get all the veggies right i still some of them i have to rely on traders and get it and and i don't even trust now what where is it has come from yes so in that case uh, do you see a system like yours that can really scale up to somebody like me somebody yes. who wants to understand i i let's say i i log in i mean i are you right right now doing that kind of way or you seeing you you see that it takes some more time to 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 get that kind of way. because i mean i mean that will that will be the ideal scenario in terms of at least at a you know it's it's a, it's a fairly complex problem i understand that but in terms of saying for a small ticket uh, audience who is like who is not going to consume more than let's say 5 to 6 kgs of veggies a, a week or so maybe more than that but but yeah exactly no which is which is how we are thinking right uh, we are thinking today because see when you took today there is this whole rush about 10 to 15 minute grocery delivery right mm. so our fundamental question there also is why should it just be end consumers if i'm sitting in a jubli hills mm. i have so many horeka customers in that area mm. that it doesn't make sense for me to put a micro warehouse and just give it to end customers right mm. right so and our ability to connect the dots right from the source mm. the technology show that journey show where it has touched all the touch points and how long it took for it to actually come to you in a transparent fashion without being able to manipulate it right uh is for us i think will be uh, our end goal right mm. how can we do that happy path right happy path of getting it from the producer to a consumer in a completely transparent way where they're able to see uh, yeah and that's where i'm seeing some questions also from the audience where they're saying you know uh like there are some fpcs who are also saying do you collaborate with fpcs uh, yes. and and you know can we be willing to collaborate and then there is also uh you know for 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 scaling how do you see fpcs do you see fpcs anyway changing 
uh, just this procurement at least easing some problem there but i i my as my as my guess is that it no it doesn't but yeah <laughs> no yeah exactly so scaling at scaling is always a, a interesting question like right? uh, the one of my very good uh, uh, friends i've worked with in the past uh, basically said if you want to scale the first thing you should do is not think about scale hmm. so you have to first focus on the core problem and try to address that and then you can figure out how that still happens yes we we've, we've been working with experimenting right we've been working with this uh, fpc uh, i think there's a women fpc out of kerala kota chitur they're giving us uh, what we call sambar on them right so mm-hmm. we're trying to experiment that right we are open we are always uh, centric around that but they can be operated in a very fairly transparent manner we are happy to collaborate with them because we know we can't do this alone and again when i talk about all of this there's no business secrets right it's in today's age today's world the more you share the better it is right uh, ip is a myth especially in software uh, and we are basically like uh, right we talk okay i challenge everybody okay you want to do last mile logistics do it for everybody don't just do it for customers right uh let's not just talk about uh, pri- uh return per square feet is x right it doesn't make sense <laughs> right so you're not your comparison should not be a retail chain but it's actually mm. be what is possible to take out right there's also another question that's coming in terms of how, you know uh, how do you handle price instability do you have do you see price instability and how do you handle it i'm i'm presuming that your answer will be more in terms of like you know currently there is that you try to minimize that stability but do you still see instability in your prices how do you do that there is huge level of instability in the pricing especially with climate change being a big factor right mm-hmm. you see you've seen the tomatoes uh you know come to 100 140 in retail mm-hmm. chains that suddenly fell down to i don't know 60 70 yesterday mm-hmm. uh, uh, uh there are a lot of factors that we cannot control until change mm-hmm. which is where i bullish about uh you know uh poly houses i'm bullish about uh some of these technologies that are actually coming and they're actually changing the way things are mm. uh again everything is in our hands we have to control this we have to make the environment better things will get better mm. i mean if we are just uh building mindless skyscrapers everywhere it's not going to work right mm. so we need to be very very mindful about how i mean it's it's so funny right hyderabad uh, uh 10 years ago was a belt where grapes were grown yeah the real estate took over right and not just related even climate right yeah. so with the rains that hyderabad is receiving in the last 5 years it's unimaginable right mm. all the grapes are dying right so the whole the whole plants are mm. it's no longer suitable so maharashtra which was suitable for growing pomegranate until recently is no longer suitable for growing pomegranate mm. it's all shifting to uh, rajasthan and gujarat right and because maharashtra is receiving, the areas like sholapur which was a drought prone region mm. today has so much con- so much production that no, it has become a hub right no which ties on to your earlier point about you know why we need to decouple agriculture from production and and from region geography exactly right because for for a long time uh we established again this is again another aspect right today we are we are lot of companies i know and a lot of startups also i know they are re- reaching out for gi tags for particular produce right, right? uh with the assumption that you know they will get a premium price when they do go for a gi but you know but going by what you are what we are discussing so far it would have been obvious that that is a recipe for for disaster in some sense because you are uh, uh, you are also reducing your potential of of much prices you are doing exactly exactly <laughs> like this whole yeah, yeah, yeah. we are in a way focusing too much on geography and making it far worse yeah, yeah. i i i i'm sure you know this, this conversation would have been very unsettling for many people in many ways <laughs> uh but nevertheless uh, we have to talk about what is what is happening on the ground uh, so thanks a lot anurag it was fun uh, doing this with the design hat and drawing it there i don't know how much uh, i mean i was a little concerned in between that that the uh, audio and video were were so tuning out a bit here and there so i'm apologies if people face difficulties in uh, doing this uh, we will try and do this matter maybe i will i am keen to do this in a more deeper way and to see how do we uh articulate this in a much more deeper way for people to really push the envelope of the conversations when it comes to fnb and supply chain so we will try out some other ways but uh, for those who tuned in so far thank you very much for joining and enjoy uh your the rest of your monday and thanks anurag it was such a fun to to do this and i'm actually wanting to want to come more uh, travel and come and see 
see how yeah. things are doing in you know? maybe i'll take some time off and uh, i but but yeah always enjoy the chatting with you no one of the things i always joke about is we should get the vcs in and actually show them how the operations are they'll understand <laughs> the true difficulty of what it is no i think <laughs> vcs do yeah i i i i i talked with a lot of vcs there in my work so i think they do uh, but you know today a large part of the funding goes to the collection center model yes so <laughs> uh, so but yeah so you know they eventually you know money you know they say the truth i mean my politically correct answer is that money flows towards truth yes. so eventually yes, not immediately but eventually so so i i hope that eventually it goes to the right set of problems and the right set of things and 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 and, and also you know at some stages money not flowing into the immediacy it was also a blessing which means you will then iron out the problems and figure out the real core work and then exactly. where money could be actually a distraction exactly. so so that is i think it's good that yeah sorry <laughs> i actually always complain about too much money yeah too much money is an issue yeah so 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 that way it, it it's good that you know it will eventually catch up there and uh, so wonderful thanks a lot anurag we are hoping you. to do this more and uh, uh, we will we'll, we'll, we'll see how we can do this at a you know a specific crop or 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 a specific yeah. commodity and and yeah. see how do we can tell deeper maybe we can try something this time i'll try to get some videos uh, of yeah, yeah. we'll we'll figure out something and we'll do this next time in a more better way yeah yeah but apologies for everyone who in case who anyone faced some technical challenges there uh, i know some many people wanted to tune in and i got some comments also from people like manoj and all uh, who were who had some troubles because of because of the technical glitches that might have happened So apologies sure. and once again thank you and enjoy have a good wonderful lunch thank you guys see you bye thank you so much thank bye. you